primal movements, are these a fad or are they fabulous? I was asked this question the other day about primal movements to comment on the popular rise of primal movement workouts, including mobility exercises in younger generations and what's the benefits of including these types of exercises into your routines. Now the thing is, primal movements have been around for such a long, long time. These are the things that we use in everyday life. They're the way we move, the way we uh, locomote ourselves, getting up, getting down, lifting, shopping. Everything we do every single day uses some form of primal movement or functional movement as it used to be called. Now these functional movements are absolutely fantastic and essential when it comes down to keeping yourself fit and healthy. Because without them, what we'll find is our bodies start to degrade and if you don't use it, you'll lose it right so what are final movements or functional movements and how can you improve them into everyday life okay there are seven basic primal movement or functional movements the first movement is to push the second movement is to pull the third movement is to squat the fourth movement is a lunge movement the fifth movement is a hinge movement the sixth movement is a brace and a rotate and the seventh movement is your locomotion also known as walking or running or gait okay let's talk about some movements in action so our first movement pattern is the push movement so with the push movement this is where we're going to move the load horizontally or vertically away from your torso so that's pushing the load away from you or pushing the load above you so this can happen in everyday movements such as when you open a door when you're pushing something away from you so uh, even for example at the end of the day when you're pushing yourself away from your desk even pushing the christmas tree up into position at this time of year when we think about some type of exercise that may be useful in a push kind of movement it could be things for example like an overhead press or anything which moves your body towards your hands like for example a press up is also classified as a push movement other kind of push movements that you might be considering thinking about include press ups body weight exercises push press barbell push military barbell presses overhead presses trx type presses presses with a medicine ball chest presses power presses suspension trainer presses the variety is almost endless now we'll move on to our next movement we're looking at our pull movements this is easy to say it's the opposite of push right however with a pull movement pattern it involves moving the weight vertically or horizontally towards your torso so you bring things towards yourself and this gives you a better alignment and posture especially for those of us that sit every day on our keyboards at our desks and it combats that effect because rather than rounding your body over what you end up is pulling your body back out and really being able to stretch that back these include things such as you know pull downs for example with lat pull downs might be pull ups if you're using a pull up bar or dumbbell rows if you're kind of in that pull up position and pulling things back they all work the back muscles, the latimus dorsi specifically, because these are great big muscles that are just below your shoulders and control your scapula. Now, other kind of pull movements that might be useful for you to think about include things like the suspension trainer rows or inverted rows. You could do that. You can do pull ups, you can do low cable rows, you can do ball slams, you can do power bank drags, you can do standing cable rows. Again, the only limit is your imagination as long as you're moving the weight towards your body or the resistance towards your body. Our next movement we'll think about is the squat. Now when we're talking about squat, we're talking about a moving pattern which is all happening below our hips as we move towards the floor and then return. Now a squatting pattern involves simultaneous moving the ankles, the knees, the hips, all to maintain balance and it's a relatively upright trunk position as well. So when you think about how you sit down on a chair, on a sofa, uh, in the car etc or, or any kind of crunching movement where effectively you're bringing yourself to the ground and bringing yourself back up again, these all use a great squat. So for example if you're picking something up from the ground and you've done your manual handling course at work, the probability is they've taught you how to go into a squat position to be able to lift utilizing your legs and not necessarily putting your back into a bad position now the kind of exercise you can do for squats well, obviously the squats for a start off and there's a such a great variety of these you can do these body weight squats goblet squats dumbbells kettlebells barbells power bags front squats barbell back squats you can do squats on a um
There's so many different types of squats, pistol squats, split squats, elevated squats, so many variations that you can actually take on board and then utilize. And the thing is, once you've started to use them, you'll find that mobility getting in and out of chairs, in and out of bed, etc., becomes so much more easier. The next movement pattern we're gonna look at is lunges. Now, lunges is that movement pattern that involves stepping and returning back to the same kind of position. And it's a pattern that we use every day in walking, in running, and it's asymmetric, it's kind of unilateral in its movement activity, because only, you're only dealing with one side at a time, you're not doing both sides of your body. You can perform this while you're climbing stairs, while you're out walking, when you're just reaching up to grab something off of a shelf. All these things, or even changing light bulbs, all these things utilize that lunge base movement. So lunges are kind of all sorts of different styles. Again, we can have forward lunges, reverse lunges, side lunges, curtsy lunges, lunges at different angles. In fact, you can do almost like every clock you, uh, position you can imagine in a lunge style. Now, one thing I hear people say is, I can't do lunges, I hate doing lunges. Now, the thing is, when you start, it can be a bit difficult as your body starts to get used to that movement. But once you have started and you start putting more involvement in there, you'll easily find the progression because you're starting to build muscle around those kind of weakened areas. Now one thing I recommend is if you find it very difficult to make that forward lunge movement then perhaps start with the reverse lunge. You're still utilizing those front legs to be able to power up but by taking the step backwards rather than forwards you're reducing that kind of impact at the start allowing yourself to build up to the point where you'll be able to do any type of lunge that you'd like. Our next movement pattern is the hinge. So the hinge movement is a massively important movement when it comes down to protecting the lower back specifically. Um, but many people have a hard time doing a hinge movement properly because the hinge movement involves moving specifically at your hinge joint with little or no movement and the knees. And to do this, you need to maintain a strong core and a strong back at the same time, along with holding that great posture. So that as you're bending over, you're not bending over with your back, but you're actually bending over at the hips to make that big difference. Um, and this make sure you just don't injure yourself going forwards. And the more that you do this, the more you practice it, then the better you're gonna feel. Because let's face it, no one enjoys having a bad back, do you? So hinge kind of movements that you can do. We can do things like stiff leg deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, and all sorts of the variations, single legged, elevated legged, single arm kettlebell swings, uh, slam balls, again, a whole variety of things that help you basically move with that hinge motion. Our next movement is the brace and rotate. This is really looking at those core muscles that we were talking about earlier and how you can really get those abdominal muscles to perform all sorts of multiple actions for you to really, really strengthen up your core. Because the core of your body, which is all the muscles effect that come all the way down the center of your body, all the way down into your, even into your glutes and your uh, quads, everything hangs off them. So the stronger and more supportive your core becomes, the better and more supportive you're gonna be and actually the easier you're gonna find other pieces of exercise. And in fact, everyday daily movement as well. So when it comes down to core abdominal kind of movements, the, these are kind of anything where we're looking to twist or rotate our body, where we're looking to specifically bend our body forwards and backwards at the trunk kind of area. And, and these are fantastic for maintaining posture and also maintaining inner strength. So your abdominals are really core function to how your body is going to work uh, and, and it helps also transfer energy from the lower part of your body into the upper part of your body and vice versa. So as you're starting to lift things, you're lifting things through your leg, the core transfers it all the way back down and back through. You can utilize these when you're stood, when you're sat, when you're laid down. Uh, and again, e anything you're kind of doing utilizes these core motions. Again, thinking back to how you sit up from in a chair or sit up in bed, all utilizing your core, you lift your body out of the car, that helps use your, your core, picking things up off the floor. This even uses your core. So what kind of exercises can you use to help strengthen your core? There's obvious things like all the abdominal type exercises, so the planks and side planks and bodyweight battle rope type work. There's also things like power bag pushes and pulls and presses and farmer's walks, shoulder taps, ball rotation, viper uh, doing lunges with rotation, kettlebells you can use, dumbbells. There's a whole variety of things again that you can really be able to utilize that absolutely activate those core muscles. Okay, 
And our final movement that I'm going to be looking at, this is all to do with locomotion. And, and let's face it, this probably is the easiest and simple one for most people to think about. It's actually how do we move around on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's walking, running, shuffling, whatever, jogging even. It's all to do with your gait. Now, this is probably one of the most important movements that anybody can have and be able to perform every single day for overall health and, and well-being. Because walking activates nearly all 650 odd muscles across your body, which, and also it's accessible to nearly everybody at any point in time. So there's nothing stopping you being able to go out for a walk and be able to start getting the benefit. In fact, there's a, a study to show that actually some of the most healthiest people in the world are those that actually go for a regular walk. So with it being accessible, easy to do, and it's on your doorstep, it should be something that you're thinking about adding into your workout routine. Uh, and thing when you're doing it also, think about you know, how you're actually doing it. Make sure you've got a nice correct posture again, make sure you've got that nice even steps, and challenge yourself so that you can continue to benefit for every, you know, every single step after step towards your 10,000 steps a day, or, or any glorious mile that you do, whether that's a country mile in the park, in a town, up a mountain, whichever miles you fancy doing. And vary it so you've got the option there. You don't have to just do walking. If, you, if you're a jogger, go jogging. If you're a runner, go running. If you want to just pick up the shopping and do a weekly shop, etc., do your farmer's walk on the way home. But take the opportunity to go walking. Thank you. If you'd like to know how you can become more fit for business, fit for life, then why don't you click like, subscribe, or even drop us a hello. It's uh, on social media. We're out there at Sharp Fit for Life or Martin Sharp, and we're always happy to be able to help and answer your questions. Bye for now. More, more, more. Where you were stood before, basically. Yeah. And then just like lift the roof. <sighs> uh, like this. Right.